Today we're going to look at how to create horizontal scrolling with page indicators. This is something that doesn't come out of the box with SwiftUI, but is fairly easy to create. This is what the final product looks like. You have multiple pages with the indicator animated, showing you which page you're on, and it takes about a couple dozen lines of code, so it's not super complicated at all. Let's start by creating a project, uh, name it anything, it doesn't matter. And once you're inside the project, we will start by creating, getting rid of the hello world text. And the first thing we need is to create our pages. And to do that, we'll start with geometry reader. Geometry reader gives us access to the coordinates inside the view, and we need those to move the pages left and right. So within the geometry reader, we'll start by creating uh, each stack. And to simulate the pages, we'll just use a simple rectangle and color it a different color for the various pages. So we'll do a fill color, uh, and then we're going to create a frame to give it a size. The size is going to be the size of the whole screen. We get that from the geometry reader that we created. So we say the width is uh, g dot size that width, and the height is g dot size that height. That makes the rectangle the full width and height of our screen. And then we're going to multiply that five times to create five pages, and we're going to change the colors so that uh, each page is recognizable as a different page. And um, we're going to build that to see what it looks like very quickly. Typically, this would be done in a scroll view because you want to scroll left and right, but we're doing it differently uh, because it's a little bit simpler this way, I think. Um, for, that means that we can't uh, scroll left and right right now because all we have is an h stack and just to show you that we have the different pages we'll wrap this in a scroll view and then we should be able to scroll through the different colors now scroll view has to be modified to say horizontal because we're trying uh, the default setting is vertical and if you say horizontal on the scroll view now we can see our different pages by default h stack comes with spacing of 10 pixels i think so we have to change that to zero just to make the pages be uh touching each other and it it's a little bit nicer that way i think so the pages are there and we're going to get rid of the scroll view for right now because we don't need it in the way that we're going to approach this the way we're going to do this is by creating a variable called background offset and we're going to move the pages left and right by offsetting the uh, h-stack essentially and that's how we're going to simulate the scrolling left and right it's going to be an animated offset so to do that we set the offset for the whole h-stack uh, and we say that it is equal to the variable we created which is background offset times the width of the view so we get the width again from the geometry reader and we are then going to m move it left or right based on a gesture. So we're going to create a new gesture and it's going to be a drag gesture. And when it ends, we're going to decide if the person has essentially swiped left or swiped right. The way we do this is by looking at the value of the gesture and the translation of it. So if we look, if we say, if the person moved their finger more than 10 pixels, to the left or to the right, we'll count that as a swipe. So if they did move it left or right uh, by 10 pixels, we'll increment the background offset value by one. So this is what the if statement is doing, saying if it moved to the right, 10 uh, increment the background offset. If, it, if the finger moved to the left by 10 pixels, increment it up or down. And we see here, if we swipe our finger left or right, we change the the color changes because we've moved to a different page, quote unquote, uh, and we've achieved this with the offset um, method. Now to make it look nicer, you can just add an animation to it and there it just looks like it's going from page to page. We're running into an issue because you can swipe all the way to the left or to the right and then leave the H stack completely and, and then it breaks. So we need to set some parameters here to say that once you've reached the end of the H stack, you shouldn't be able to scroll, uh, to scroll out of it completely. And the way we do this is by adding just another if statement. So, and we're going to say if the background offset has a value that is greater than zero or less than four, because um, 
you might have to play with this a little bit and just to test it we we're gonna say which rectangle is which page and it starts with zero to four in this case but we'll play with this because it's a little finicky sometimes so if you say that the background offset value is between zero and four that should keep you within the bounds except sometimes you're going to run into problems where you'll need to play with these numbers um, and unfortunately here we we're starting at the green page, which is the middle page, which means zero isn't the first rectangle, zero isn't the black rectangle, it's the green rectangle. So we'll start with zero and then go negative and positive from there. And we'll adjust our if statements to reflect that by saying if it's greater than or equal to negative two and less than or equal to two, those should be our bounds. And we'll give that a try. And it seems like we're still leaving the bounds of the h stack. So let's get rid of the equals and just say greater than or equal to negative 2 and 2. That should work. Okay. It seems like we are staying within the bounds of the h stack and we can keep going left and right. Uh, so that's what we need. So now what we need to do is build the actual indicator of the pages. And we're going to do this with a Z stack because we want it to stay on top of the pages. And we're going to do just a quick styling and say, you know, we're going to create a rectangle with a white background and opacity of 0 0.3 and a frame of 300 by 100. And we're going to also give it some round uh, round corners to make it look nice. This is going to be the background of our indicator. And there it is on top right now. Um, except it seems like we're running into an issue where we can't scroll past the green and we're running out of the out of the bounds. So I think we need to change. Um, we need to change some of our page numbers again. So we're starting at black now. It seems like it's launching into black. So we need to change these back to the way we had them. So this is what I meant by sometimes this is a little finicky and you need to play with it. But so we'll start with zero to four again. And we're going to, our pages are going to start at black and uh, end at yellow. Let's say greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to four. Let's see if that works. Okay, we're okay. We're it works almost, uh, but we're running out again. So let's get rid of the equals and just keep it greater than zero or less than four. There is an easier way to do this. Obviously, you can print out the value of uh, background offset in your console and then do this the proper way. But sometimes brute forcing your way through a problem is faster. And we seem to have fixed it, so it works now. Uh, and what we're we're back to building our page indicator and the way we'll do this is we'll add a H stack within the Z stack and the indicator is essentially a, a, a number of circles which change shape uh, based on which page they're on. So we're creating a circle with a color of gray and a frame which is going to vary. So we're going to say the width is going to be either 40 or 20 pixels depending on if the back if the background offset is zero, zero being the, the the ID of each page, and we'll have a circle for each page. We're going to have an overlay just to style it and I'll give it a border. Uh, and if we launch it, we should see that on page zero, the circle gets bigger and on all the other pages, uh, it is smaller. So we're going to just repeat this for each other, each of the other pages, and we're going to change the numbers of the conditions to reflect each page. So page four, the circle will get bigger if the background offset value variable is set to four and we'll see how this works when you go from page to page, it'll just change size based on these conditions. And there we go. And to make this look a little bit nicer, what we can do is um, give it a animation. So the changing of the size will look nice from going to small to large and large to small. There we go. So this looks quite nice already. All we need to do is just a couple of finishing touches. Uh, we're going to give it a position so it's in the center of the screen. The way we do that is we do g.size.width divided by half and 
g that size at height divided by uh, half divided by two um, and be careful to put this on the z stack and not on the h stack because the z stack also contains the background and the circles and there we go it works and finally as a final last touch on this uh, we can change the colors of the circles to the representative colors of the pages that they represent that way it's even easier for the user to see what are the options of the pages uh, before they scroll to them and we should see this here there we go so you can see the last one is yellow before you even get there um, so that's quite nice and there you have it that's it if you find this useful please hit like and subscribe and i will keep making the videos i hope this was helpful to everyone thank you